You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. On the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New York City After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New York City After Show. Hey, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another AfterBuzz After Show for the Real Housewives of New York City. I feel like we're in Disneyland. I'm sorry. Just say over that. Are yeah. we in Main Street Disneyland right like, now? I feel like I'm on the Peter Pan ride. Yeah. Specifically. This is the absolute wrong song for New York Housewives, <laughs> but I appreciate it. I like the energy. Good effort. Good effort. Thank hey, you. Thank this you. Is, this is the real Housewives. No, this is the Desperate Housewives. The Housewives ah. that started the real Housewives. Oh. So I'm paying homage. Right. Right. Well, even still too innocent for Desperate Housewives. Yeah. But yes. welcome, everyone. Um, we are um, buzzing about... Real Housewives of New York City, and I am here with three wonderful co-hosts. To my left... Hi, everybody. I'm Yermon Gur. And I'm Anna Koppel. And I'm Molly Harper. And we are official. <laughs> we are doing uh, episode number two of season five with the th brand new, pretty much brand new cast of The Real Housewives. Um, last week, I know I was a little trepidatious about the new cast, and this week, I think I'm starting to settle in with the new ladies and feel a little bit more at home. How did Absolutely. you feel the energy of the show was? Was there any meshing? Do you think we were building on anything interesting? I mean, we're definitely building, but I think there's... I, I feel like the show opened with this dinner between Heather and Aviva, and I feel like you know, they went to go kiss hello and ended up, like, smacking faces. <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah, and I feel like that was just, like, really... It's because their heads are so big. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but I feel like it was really, like, indicative of everything that's going on. Like, it's awkward. It's still awkward. They're just getting mm -hmm. to know each other. Yeah, I yeah. mean, their energy together <laughs> is awkward, and you I'm can so sense <laughs> that. I'm surprised I didn't cut that out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <It's laughs> yeah. I actually rewinded it then <laughs> to go, wait, did that just They probably it. kept it in there for exactly that reason, oh so God. it could provide some sort of comedy. I don't know. I, I agree with all of you in the sense that they are still getting used to each other, but I was uh, telling Anna earlier that that it's definitely not preventing me from from hastily creating opinions about everything that's going on in the show. So actually, Phil, you might want to keep your hand ready on that buzzer. That's like the opinions expressed, or not necessarily those. You have to <laughs> just keep your hand on that buzzer because I'm just gonna. He already all has I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've just got all of those. I've just got a bunch of those tonight. So just just keep your hand on it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear what those are because those make me really. Uh, excited when people have those kind of crazy opinions. Um, my, my feeling Wait, why over are they crazy? Well, my <laughs> feeling tonight over like they the require a buzzer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're allowed to have opinions, right? Right. No? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, but I thought that like th it was very disjointed. Like each woman had its own s had her own story in this week's episode. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really think there was too much theme or tying it all together. There wasn't like really that much drama this, yeah, this week. Yeah, I think the theme was still introducing everybody. Because I think so. It was like part two of the introduction. They should have definitely. done a two-hour pilot. They honestly. definitely should have because you kind of want to get out of that and move into the meat, yeah. the meat of the show. Um, we met in the first, in the opening scene at dinner, we met Aviva and, well, we had already met her husband in the last show, Reed. Um, and then we also met Heather and her husband, Jonathan Schindler. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. first thing I thought was like, oh my God, Schindler's List. Yeah, and then they brought course. it up. This yeah. poor guy. How many times <laughs> in a day do you think he gets asked like, oh my God, like the Schindler? Of the list. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, she had <laughs> said her husband was Jewish. And I, and I remember that Schindler from the movie is not Jewish. So I thought, oh, okay, well, it couldn't be the same story. Because the guy with the list of Schindler, the Schindler guy, right. the list wasn't Jewish. Anyway, right. um, he's in commercial real estate. And um, they seemed, you know, like functional, normal. And that's what kind of weirds me out when I see 
the women with their husbands, it seems kind of normal, and then them together. Yeah. Um, how does this happen? How does this transition go from being kind of normal with a husband and children to like just kind of kooky and crazy with other people? Wait, did that dinner make it sound like they were normal to you? Did, did you get the feeling that when the four of them got together, I they didn't were get normal? That. No, 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 not together. <laughs> I'm saying as husband and wife, they seem to have the functional drama relationships. Is less. Yeah. The drama is less when the husband, when the and, husband and wife are, are together. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we had Aviva saying that she couldn't function without Reed and that he's her, like, breath. That's what she said, <laughs> yeah. literally. And I'm like, <laughs> well, he's your third leg as well. well. <laughs> I, think the hus I think the husbands are relegated to, to, to damage control, as I'm sure husbands are going to have to be on these kinds of shows where these females are showcased. And that's what Jonathan had to end up doing anyways when uh, Heather spilled the beans about what... Um, uh, so what, uh, what do you call it? Aviva's ex-husband, who, yeah, Harry had slept with who, and the <laughs> first thing out of Jonathan's mouth was like, check, thank you, <laughs> check please, which right. it immediately cut out that what was about to be this very awkward blow up of people looking at each other for extended periods of time yeah. due to editing. Yeah, well, speaking mm -hmm. of awkward, I'm actually going to say thanks to everyone listening on iTunes. Um, we really appreciate it, and if you guys want to spread the love with your friends or the diseases that we might have, spread them. They're good diseases. <coughs> Phil, Phil, I'm not calling you a disease, <laughs> um, but nice just spread Phil. them. Keep I'm always coming. awkward with that. Yeah, keep them that coming. That was to a totally natural segue. <laughs> it was. <laughs> was really it? nice transition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for listening on iTunes, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, but so we started at the first dinner and then another, we had a lot of meals today as we discussed. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Nobody eats at these meals. But no, of course but not. They sit and around a table. There's barely anyone in the restaurant. But there is there. Pinot Grigio. There's always yes. there's Pinot Yeah. There's, 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 there's always Pinot Grigio. <laughs> as there should be, The really. whole season's going to be an ad for Pinot. It's right, just not right. a meal without Pinot Grigio. <laughs> I love Pinot Grigio. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to lie. You fit in then. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. we, we moved to Heather's house, which is where she had the party and for the her father. And the Berkshires. And the Berkshire. Wait, how come every time they say that word, they have to say it like they're British? All of a I know, I know. I'm like, isn't it Berkshire? Yeah, and it's not. And she said it's not pretentious. Well, then don't say it with an English yeah. accent. Yeah. But and, anyway, and Aviva had mentioned that um, she she actually said we're always looking to freeload. Yeah, that yeah. was a great so line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're and always we looking to freeload. We don't winter in the Hamptons, so we'd love to come to the Berkshires. Yeah. So they do freeload because yeah. they don't have a house. They run a house. Yeah, in the right. Hamptons. I think they're making it pretty clear because. Um, from last season or from seasons prior, we had Alex, who actually didn't seem to have that much financial uh, dollars. Dollars. She didn't have, she didn't have, have anything dollars. really. <laughs> yeah, her house in the <laughs> first seasons, her house was like dilapidated and falling apart in Brooklyn, dilapidated. And so, anyway, I think maybe, possibly, we might see a little bit that Aviva doesn't have as much money as she may look. Like she, she looks does. gorgeous. Yeah, she does. She does. But I realize Aviva is the kind of woman I would like to be. Tall and blonde. <laughs> Missing a leg. Go ahead, no. and, go no. ahead and just buzz that thing now, Phil. I don't know that. <laughs> or option I B. I would like to be Carol. I really would. She's <laughs> really, except her boyfriend. We'll get to the boyfriend. He's a little we'll 80s rock band. Yeah. But one yeah. thing that I don't think we um, discussed but was the main topic of conversation at that dinner between Heather and Aviva were, um, you know, they were trying to compare raising children with disability. Right. And Aviva mm -hmm. brought up her leg again. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we get it, Aviva. I thought she was going to bring up. This one time at band camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one time when I had a Yeah. A this big one time leg. when I had an accident <laughs> and I had to lose a leg. It's like she's going to start every Well, well yeah. when she brought that up, I thought she was going to bring up maybe she had a child with a disability, not that she was the child with a disability. Right. And no. Right. She's the spokesmodel for women who've had accidents and then had to lose their leg and become rich heiresses to some Is fortune of some she sort in New like York City Paul everywhere. <laughs> so she gets to give out advice as to how to raise. She's like a carbon no. copy of Paul McCartney's wife. Ex <laughs> ex wife. <laughs> 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 I mean, kind oh of. They're tall, blonde. So she like should go on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, basically. Like Maria yeah. Menounos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had that discussion, and I felt like um, they had a couple cutaways to Heather functioning with her children in a restaurant really quickly, and Aviva functioning with her children. And when Aviva w was with her kids, it was really calm and cool, yeah. collected. And they showed Heather like put down the spoon or eat with a spoon or please come Chaos. on do this for me and yeah. that was more chaotic so i loved it when heather said yeah and we're, we're just pretty we're pretty much in the middle parents i'm like yeah right <laughs> you are not yeah. i could just see her being like a beast of a mom and she said that she gives three toys a week to her kid at least or well something. she fails at giving one to, so she's she says she gives one toy a week she's like i don't think that's too much it may not be too much. I mean, again, they live in a slightly uh, different world than most people do. So she gives one toy, but then she said she sees like three toys that fall in the category of the one toy. And then she just loves her son so much that she's just, well, if it's three toys, what does it matter if it's one toy or three toys? So she gives them all three. 
But one toy a week seems like insane to me, even. Isn't that a lot? Anyway, one, two, I got a, I got a My Little Pony every week. I think. Really? Yeah, and my oh. parents were like broke. But um, <laughs> probably because they were buying my little pony. Because they're kind of expensive, right? <laughs> probably. Oh but I, I don't know. I don't know. I think the thing th the thing that was interesting <laughs> for me was that uh, of all the dirt that we dish out, uh, oddly enough, Aviva's advice wasn't completely out of the realm of good no, advice. It wasn't. Right. It I actually really right. was kind of poignant, and it's like, okay, well, you know, I know that you started out the sentence with this one time when I had an accident and I lost my leg. But what came after what after it was pretty good advice. And what was it again? It was the fact that ju you, if even if your child has a disability of some sort, oh, and you don't spoil them, treat them. Th all they want to do is be just like everybody else. Yeah. And she um, also said that Reed is suffering the effects now mm -hmm. because she continues to be spoiled. Right. Wasn't there a funny yeah. comment too? What, what was she saying? There's like. She said something about oh uh, that when they finally had the conversation about how they were all going to go uh, dirt biking, and then the <laughs> people looks to her husband Reed and goes, "Then you can lose a leg and we'll be buddies." No, 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 that's oh not God. that's not how it went. They asked if, uh, but you're close. They asked uh, if he could ride a motorcycle. He's like, "Yeah, well, you know, what's the worst that could happen?" Uh, and right. Heather said, "You could lose a leg. <laughs> you guys could match." <laughs> yeah. Heather brought that up. Oh my wow. God. Yeah. 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 I m I missed that. That's that juicy. That was nasty. I, she's. She makes nasty comments. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. But she did make that pact to not be catty, so. Yeah. Right. I just want to point that just out. Dirty lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dirty lies. Well, so then Heather ends up, um, we're, since we're reviewing the get-togethers that we had throughout this episode, Heather has, in the book shows, mm -hmm. um, she has the party to honor her father, which she called an homage, mm -hmm. um, and she said her dad didn't want a memorial or anything. Right. I found, I... I like to be cynical. I found it to be oddly charming or mm. heartwarming. It was. But did the but people there know why they were there? It seemed like surprise, like she was yeah. just announcing as they were there, like, <laughs> everyone, everyone, <laughs> as you all know, my father passed away. And um, this is actually a party f in his honor. It didn't seem like people really knew that or right. something. But I feel like that's what she does anyway. Like, you know, we're at a cocktail party. Hey, guys, my dad died, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of uh, her style. And I don't think they were shocked by it. Right. But so. since the party was in honor of him, it just seemed like... I, I was know. just waiting for her to tumble over because she was kneeling on top of that stool, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, she's going to lose her balance. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. she? Such an awkward pose to be, like, kneeling on top of a stool while trying to it get It doesn't make you that father. much taller. No, not really. To stand on the stool or to stand on the ground. It, it actually doesn't make you taller, like, at all. Right. It actually <laughs> evens you out because <laughs> you're, you're on your knees. Even. It just makes up for your legs. Yeah. All, that's all it does. Unless you have really short calves. <laughs> she seemed what it was like to be a Viva. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That thing, that, that event was... It wasn't such a bad. I mean, I it was wasn't bad. I myself was a little confused just because me personally, I don't know if I would have given a party. Although I know that, like in some cultures, like Irish cultures, you don't have a, a wake or something like that. You have a party. You send them off. You know, not in my Irish culture. Isn't 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 it Ireland but where you where you in, in uh, traditional Irish culture where do you? Don't I know have it's Mex like uh, it's very popular in like Mexico wrong. to like celebrate the dead in more of a party fashion. But it's anyway, it's my very possible. I may not know what I'm talking about. But the point is my that me like personally, I would probably want a more somber affair, and this wasn't really. But then who am I to judge how they mourn? I find it odd that I'm having trouble, like, figuring out for myself w if I like Heather or not. Because one minute she says something like, "You could lose your leg, and then you could be buddies," or the <laughs> next minute she actually has a what is probably an understandable celebration to honor you know the memory of her father they weren't able to have some sort of uh, event prior to that and that seemed perfectly normal and they didn't do anything really weird they just made a toast everyone drank had yeah. a good time it was yeah but isn't it kind of the opposite of what her father wanted he didn't just say no funerals he said no memorial and i feel like it's sort of disrespectful to doesn't her father. she mention that she like her father liked parties i i think that I think that, sh yeah, I think she I was just so. trying to kind of casually be like, and here's to you, Dad. Like, as Kristen said, I don't know if all the guests even knew that that was going to happen. Yeah. I don't think they knew that they were invited to a memorial. Mm -hmm. But I feel like she just, like, was finding a loophole. Yeah. Having a memorial for her father. Yeah. I mean, and once... You want to hate her so bad, Anna. I, I do hate her, <laughs> and I'm not ashamed of it. Okay. So... Well, <laughs> Well, I see. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, and I think women like that would want to be on a sh on a reality show look for ways to get a little attention, and I yeah. and it looked like a little bit of a way to get attention. Like, here's an excuse for me to have a party in the Berkshires. In the Berkshires, and it's invite a good story. all my fabulous friends. <laughs> you know, story or not, fact or fiction, it it that's it's got a little undertone of that to it. Yeah. But I did find it oddly endearing, and I liked her sister. 
um, I because like the sister too. Sister I liked her classy. sister because her she was classier. No, I'm joking. Because remember when she read the poem that their dad wrote? And she oh, was she like, was oh, dad was a effing no, I genius. like that. That's what I, I was like. like. Oh. Excuse what my I like. French. <laughs> yeah. yeah, excuse yeah. my French. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, why God. is she? Why is she a 50 year old boxer all of a sudden from, <laughs> from Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, and this one time at band camp where I lost my freaking leg. That's how she talked. Ding, Come ding. on. She, talk. she did. She really did. <laughs> well, I kind of liked her when she said that because it was like, you know, everyone's like, oh, he was a sweet man. He was a sweet man. But it's like, fuck that. He was a good fucking dude. And I miss him. And whatever. It was like, to me, a like, way to express like your passion about the fact that you loved your dad and that you thought he was talented or whatever. But I liked her because she cried. Whereas Heather... Ended was up pretending crying. to cry. Yeah, she was faking during the poem. Yes, she was faking during the poem, but then she was crying in the in the. That's what I was gonna say. In, in the, the interview, interview, doesn't she get teary eyed? That yeah, was, that, that seemed, seemed more genuine. genuine to that me. was genuine. Yeah. Yeah. But during yeah. that poem I read, it was like Heather's way less obnoxious when she's with her family or with her friends, like up in the Berkshires. But I think when she's around the women, the other housewives, she puts on this persona I where she agree. does all the nose squinting, which we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I would agree. And the, ah, yeah. yeah, and it's so annoying. But I didn't, I didn't find her off putting then. That was like the only two minute segment of the whole show. I didn't find her off putting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe you've got you're onto something. Maybe yeah. something happens to her when she's around the other girls. Well, because she's not as pretty as the other ladies, so I think she has to try harder. She's not as yeah. pretty as her sister either. <laughs> she's unfortunate. Right. She's right. Unfortunate for her. As we stated before, <laughs> looks are total game when we're discussing the show because it is the show. No, this is the kind of show. Roughness. No, nope. this is the kind of show where you talk about looks. It is. Um, <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, is, so once, I mean, you know, we didn't have women from the show at that party, so it was pretty mm-hmm. much just right. Heather's it's family. Just all about Heather. Right. Um, it's just probably like getting getting to know Heather segment. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> We've had a lot of those, I feel like, though. Yeah. Um, I've gotten to know her. So Aviva and then uh, Aviva and Ramona meet up later on for dinner, and I think Aviva, although I like her a lot, I think she's an instigator. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and I think she likes to play innocent when she isn't because her and Ramona were discussing Luann telling the girls at lunch about the argument or about the th- quote unquote threat. And, and Aviva said, I didn't have the heart to tell Ramona that all the girls knew, but it's like, no, 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 no. You had the heart. You just kind of want to keep it from her because it gives you more leverage. It's like if you really, because mm. at the end of their little conversation, she said something. Um, Aviva and R- R- Ramona both agreed to be honest with each other. Yeah, what's the deal and with they, all these packs? Right. <laughs> and Aviva cheered. <laughs> they did a cheers, but yet Aviva wasn't being honest about that not everyone, you yeah. know, was told. Well, right. first of all, wasn't it one of your predictions last week that we were going to see some things come out from Aviva that she wasn't all honky dory? I think, I think it was. I, yeah. I think somebody said we're going to find I out. That. That I think it might have been you actually as well. Yeah. You might have said that I think we're going to find out Aviva's not this fantastic person that happens to be the champion of disabilities everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. She doesn't necessarily tell her that, yeah, all the girls know about it, but she absolutely fishes. I forget the exact she line. She totally fishes. She totally fishes in the sense that she's like, Sitting there, it's like, so what was going on with Luan? That was that was kind of weird, yeah. right? That kind of like she wants backwards, to get it out. S- s- th- that backwards way that one tries to get your opinion about something without actually telling you what they're actually thinking. Right. She was definitely poking and prodding, and of course, Ramona, you know, went. Uh, uh, what do you call it? She just explained herself, and he was like, "Yeah, right. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, weird. Yeah, weird. Kind of. Yeah, I know. That's mm-hmm. weird." Meanwhile, she's thinking like. I know another side of the story, so right. that's that's yeah. not genuine. But no, I feel like not. she wants to be friends with Ramona because, like, Ramona's the one person that hasn't slept with Harry. So, <laughs> <laughs> good point. Or interest. so we think. So far, that's true. But Aviva um, also said you don't want to get on Ramona's bad side. So I think La- Aviva's playing her She's cards. She's like kissing up to her. Yeah, because yeah. it's like if you get Ramona on you, even though I like Ramona as a char- as a character, you know th- her demeanor. I like that annoyingness that she has. If you get her going, then it's like it's just going to make you not have the upper hand. I don't know. It's just I not I'll a good situation to start at the beginning to get against Ramona. I'll, ta- I'll take it one Truth. step further. I think one of the themes that we're going to find out is that Aviva, here's one of those buzzer times. I think Aviva, Aviva is kind of a brown noser. She's a little oh, bit of brown. Oh, she's a total brown noser. So she's absolutely playing her cards so that she's kind of brown nosing Ramona and brown nosing, uh, you know, uh, later on in the episode. There's people, she, everywhere she goes, she's like, oh my gosh, you're so fantastic. That looks lovely on you. You're so amazing. Everywhere yeah. she goes, everyone yeah. around her is fantastic. Yeah. Brown well, people edition. 
What? That's what? a little racist. <laughs> what the I, hell? Yeah. That was, I, mean, I wish I've, we I've had a buzzer. A, I've heard, yeah, I've heard of opinions, but that was, can I counter buzz that never, buzzer? Yeah. And I've never seen Phil smile so brightly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. <laughs> He's like, this will be He's inappropriate, so but screw it. <laughs> um, well, since we've kind of transitioned into Aviva, because we have her actually as a whole topic for the show, she is a, a little bit of a brown noser. And Absolutely. Oh, that's why I said brown people. Okay. Um, but still. <laughs> I get it now. Um, that didn't take it all long <laughs> for either of us. Aviva, when she met up with Carol in the thrift shop, uh-huh. um, she was saying to Carol, like, oh, my gosh, so how about Luann talking about Ramona? And she was really trying to egg on yeah. Carol to start talking some smack. And Carol, you can tell, is just not even aware, really. She just kind of does her own thing and doesn't really respond to it. Um, but she said to Carol – Oh, my God, you are so cool. Right. Yeah. Cool Carol. Cool Carol. Oh, my God, I thought they were going to fall in love. I thought yeah. some serious lesbianic thing was going to happen yeah. between the lesbianic. two of them. It could still happen. Lesbianic. You heard lesbianic. it here first. Lesbianic. It's a word. Lesbianic. Look it up. Google it. Lesbianic. Because she was like, you're so cool. I love your book. I mean, she's been crushing on the woman. Yeah. Like, hardcore since they met. Yeah. And, and everything Carol puts on is, oh, my God, you look amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and then Carol's like, oh, honey, try this on. And yeah. it was like, I just thought something was. And Carol they were loving each other. Carol yeah. said, what's not to love about Aviva? She's a blonde bombshell, and she's my super fan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she loves me, so why yeah. not So the brown nosing is not? clearly working. Yeah. 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 And she wanted that jacket that Carol had been wearing at the beginning of the, right. the scene. She was like, where's that jacket? It's like she almost wants, to, like be she wants like to be like her. And then yeah. that, isn't it she go up to the pile of clothes and say, oh, these are good. And Carol's like, that's my pile like that she has on yeah. hold for her to try. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then she came out in the onesie thing or whatever it was. I the, actually the love Me the leopard lo- onesie. She wore that great. <laughs> she did. That's what I'm saying again. I would love to be like Aviva. <laughs> um, no, I thought she looked awesome in that. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, all right, yeah she definitely did. Um, and so do we do. Yeah. So we talked about Aviva having dinner with a Ramona. Where else did we see Aviva in this episode? She had. Um, did she have lunch with somebody? With Ramona. We oh, that was room. okay. I yeah. was saying that was dinner. Yeah. Mona, she did the shopping. Because Carol. I feel like we saw her more than I am re- recalling now that I'm looking at my notes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> See on. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Mm. Yeah. See, on the one hand, I think that Aviva might be trying to instigate. On the other hand, you know, they these women don't know each other very well, so maybe she doesn't know what else to talk about. Like this is kind of like. They have very little in common at this point. Yeah. And maybe she's trying to bring up, I'm just trying to like see the other side of things. Maybe she's just trying to bring up, you know, oh, how about that situation between Luann and Ramona? A, because she doesn't know what else to talk about with them because they're new friends. And B, maybe to feel out how other people feel because, you know, that's one way to find out if you have similar feelings as somebody just to kind of feel out their take on a situation. So right. I don't know 100, like I, I do see her instigating a little bit, but on the other hand, I'm like, it's so early in the season that she might just be trying to make conversation because she doesn't really know well, this. But women. that's the thing. That's fine. Except, isn't that a dangerous Kinda play? Like what we're doing right now. Yeah. That's that's a dangerous play. Like I totally get that she's trying to figure out where she fits in and all this, and trying to become like everybody's friend and get to know people. But to do that with the only conversation topic of things about other people, yeah. that's a dangerous card to play because you may get called on it at some that's point. True. But her yeah. only other card is I'm missing a leg, and yeah. everybody already knows that. Right. Maybe true. she's just boring. Maybe they're all bored. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe what they're all bored. What is it that they do? S- what 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 is it that they do besides eat non-existent meals and drink Pinot Grigio? What is it that they're doing? <laughs> right, well, right. I mean, when they're, they're not so taping. Yeah. What was Aviva's claim to fame again? I don't know why I forgot because we went over like all their history last week, and then I, I have it. I don't know why I can't remember. But I don't um, remember we did want to talk about Carol and her far-off boyfriend, Russ. Oh, I, I really want to talk about this. <laughs> Her Aerosmith boyfriend. Yeah. Aviva, sorry, Aviva, to answer your question, is extremely educated. She has everything from a master's, d- a bachelor's from Vassar, a master's from NYU, and a law degree, but she's pretty much just a mom. Yeah. 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 She I mean, not like being a just a mom isn't <laughs> something. She has, like, I think four kids, but she hasn't had a big career. Okay. This I couldn't remember. But yeah. she's a socialite and attends all the philanthropic events. What a life. What a life. Yeah. She probably uses her law degree to make sure that she doesn't get screwed out of anything when needing to process prosthetics, making sure that they get repaired properly, insurance claims, and so on and so forth. I'm good just saying. Good call. Thank good you. Call. If she passed the bar. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Interesting we point. We don't know about All right. that. Maybe Wait, so you were saying, oh, well, let's get to um, we were Carol and Russ. Carol yeah. and Russ. Russ. So, um, I, first of all, let me begin with this. When they get in the car, I'm so sick of hearing people from New York talk about how much they hate Los Angeles. I just, I just want to throw I'm that not, out there. I'm not, I never get sick of it. You never get <laughs> sick of it? No. Uh, I'm so sick Hater. of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, what did I miss? Nothing. You know like LA. Like Groundhog's Day. Yeah, you know LA. Weather. I literally, when he said that, was like, amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. I actually It's just my own life. But, but only <laughs> because I was in New York last week and I was missing it so much. So, oh, and interesting. So that song um, they're talking about. Oh, right. Yeah. His we'll song? We'll get to that. Um, so that song that she's like, I only want to hear the songs that are about me. Me. I that are thought. about me. It's the first time we saw her really be self or kind of self-absorbed. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, she's self-absorbed to an extent the whole yeah, time. But this was the biggest moment where she was really indulging in herself. So that she wants men to be obsessed with her emotionally, Mentally, sexually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's cool. I understand that. But uh, she that seems really low maintenance. <laughs> 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 that song to me sounds more like a dig. The the lyric is, "I miss being lonely when I'm with you." So, mm. yeah, I, that it doesn't sound like a love song to me. No, yeah, it's like I'm lonely when I'm around you because I want someone else or something. It's yeah. like, yeah, I'd rather be lonely than be with you. It's I awesome. She actually even asked, what do you guys do after the show? And he's like, a lot of times we just travel to the next location. And I'm thinking to myself, uh-huh. yeah, after the 30 minutes we're given to bang whoever's in the backstage that's like 20 years old and wants to hang out with yeah. us, yeah. then after we go to the next location. Yeah. Sure. I'm, meanwhile, every rocker's like, no, dude, we totally hang out with chicks after the show. Yeah. She knows. And she she bl- has to know. Mm, I, mean, I, I mean, I kind of appreciate that on, on one, one hand. She's already, you know, she's widowed. It's cool that she's not that concerned with what he's doing, and then when he's there, it's like a relationship of convenience. And if it's convenient for the both of you, then like, why not? Yeah, I don't the buy it. I, got too. I don't buy it. I think that's something that she's saying to as a defense mechanism, yeah. so that she doesn't like if he does move on or if she finds out he is sleeping with other women, she'll be like, I was totally okay with that anyways because we were open. Well yeah. Yeah. I don't Carol. buy that. Well, then how do Bull you explain Carol. what happened at the the little couture place that they were trying on stuff with? Well, I think it's proof. Proof is in exactly what Anna was just saying. You mm. know, she she was acting all cool with Aviva, like, yeah, we have an open relationship. I don't care what he does. He mm. can do whatever no, he wants. No, no, I'm talking about... And then she's like, I hope he's obsessed with me. I want him to sing songs about me. It's like, she's being... Yeah, Aviva... I was, talk- I was sorry, so sorry to interrupt. I was saying, what, uh, I was talking about wha- how she basically hit on that guy who looked like he was 19. Right, right, right. And then she's like, oh, yeah, my girlfriend, she's a model. I'm like, of course she's a model. You look like a model. And then here's, right. he's like 20 years old, and she's like, I bet that would look See, amazing I thought on that your was so girlfriend. I mean, that was A, obviously so staged, and he was a you know, actor for hire. But Definitely. secondly, yeah. I think they were trying no to. No one that I handsome is just hanging around. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I figured it's New York. It's there aren't there models everywhere just gushing out of every orifice? That doesn't happen in L.A., no, well, <laughs> not where it's Groundhog's Day every day. You know, on reality and the only shows, person they gushing for it is stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, most of this is scripted. I was actually on a reality show, mm-hmm. um, which sounds ridiculous, on TLC. Uh-huh. And it was a reality show, and it was a script. We followed a script. Yeah. And really? I, yes. And I was cast. Everyone else was actually the person they were. But I was cast to be their assistant. Like, their, like I was supposed to actually be their, like, people thought I was actually their assistant. But hmm. it was cast. I mean, it's yeah. all very, very scripted. So you can yeah. only trust so much of it. It's like, ooh, they just happen to conveniently have the cameras there when someone gets the phone call that this is happening. Yeah. No. You I know, I mean, it's I very... I totally thought that they were. You're right. Oh <laughs> What's going on? Well, but I mean, I think that they... Uh, they cast these people for who they are, whatever, and then that the certain aspects of their personality are amplified. Yeah. So... Yeah. You know, as we see coming up in next week's episode, that Carol is flirting with Mario in front of Ramona, which is and she actually like says, "I do. I, on- I only flirt with <laughs> when their wives are <laughs> husbands or when their wives are next to them." So like yeah, like well, that got that going for you. <laughs> yeah, and how how much how much attention do you need? She needs a lot of attention. And so so perhaps that was set up, but it's you know to demonstrate this part of her personality. Like I need attention from men who already have a woman because it validates me. Um, so, you know, good for her, good <laughs> for her. But I, it really like speaks volumes about uh, her intimacy issues and, uh, to be queen of long distance. I don't know if that's something to brag about. Well, I did just want to say the queen of long distance. Well, she's got it down pat cause her husband's pretty far away. 
yeah. which sounds horrible. It's horrible. But, <laughs> but when she so said horrible. that, that's the thing, though. When people Burn. say things like this, I read into everything that everyone says. So that was like glowing to me. It's yeah. like you want a long distance relationship, you got that's it. That's the longest distance. Literally, thing you, could you know, have. Right. it's like horrible. It's right. horrible, but it's so really true. Really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna take this opportunity <laughs> to let you guys know that if you want to. Um, buy anything on Amazon. A coffin. I was going to say coffin, but I <laughs> avoided it. Thank you for saying it. That's why I took a long pause. I was like, what is, what exists except coffins? I can't think of anything. An urn. Else. An urn. Yes, that's true. Father's Day gifts. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, unless, coming up. Coming unless up. Yeah. Coffin, yeah. Father's Day gifts. So guys go on um, Amazon or go to afterbuzztv.com and click on the Amazon logo and uh, it takes you right to the site super easy and you can buy whatever you need you can shop without pants that's what i say it's always the selling point that should just be the tagline for amazon shop yeah. without pants does it cost you extra it doesn't cost you extra phil <laughs> y- all you have to do is click on the link and as long as you got your internet running you're all good to go holy moly that's amazing isn't it crazy <laughs> we'll be oh having an Lord. infomercial after the show if you'd like to join us phil's gonna be wearing one of those ugly sweaters with no pants, because no that's pants. how you no shop pants. Amazon. <laughs> right, Phil? Come on, Phil. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, well, I did also want to say about her her boyfriend, which um, getting on the shallow level, he was very Aerosmithy looking. Like, too Aerosmithy looking. He was right there. Yeah, it, it was the whole, like, rocker from, like, the late 80s kind of look. And oh, he was not cute. And yeah, no. and I didn't think his music sounded that great. So. No, it sounded like it was recorded in, like, a second bedroom yeah. of, a, of, a, of a condo. Yeah. yeah. I mean and he totally he rent. He rented this car for this shot. Or oh, something. okay. So I want to talk about the car ride. Yeah, yeah. So he picks her up, and they go on a drive through. It looks like maybe the Upper East or Upper West Side, down through Times Square, like all through town. They never end up anywhere. They're just like going for a drive the entire time. Mm-hmm. So pointless. It's like, what are you tourists? Like, what are you driving around town for? I don't get it. Well, okay. They didn't go anywhere. New York to drive around New York is fun. One of the best memories of my life was in New York with a comic. We were driving around, and it was like 80 degrees at night, humidity, and there were tons of people, and we had the windows down, and we were cruising to like New York. Da, da, da. Were you Whatever. by any chance it was listening to a song written about you? Because that's what Carol loves to do. New York. Driving right. around New York, listening to a song that was written for her about but her. She has money, Kristen. Like she that's can true. go that's and do things. That's something that poor people do. <laughs> <laughs> she can do things. She doesn't I'm have like, to be like cheap New York for night. Free. Yeah. The other thing is, it, he was supposed to be leaving the next day, like. If that's what you want to do together when you have, like, a night together is just, like, drive around in traffic, boo. Boo to that. No, thank you. Um, yeah, if you have a really successful relationship, you'd probably I like be, New like, York inhaling enough. the same air, having a glass of wine, having a nice meal yeah. somewhere. Or I go into Pound Town. I like New go. York enough that that's exciting to me. But that's, I've also been... Thank you, Phil. Literally, like, best memory of my life. With a comedian who is you now passed away. Song. This is a great song. Yeah, I'm up in Brooklyn. Now I'm down in Tribeca, right next to the Narrow. But I'll be hood forever. Rap break. I'm the new Sinatra. And since I made it here, I can make it anywhere. Literally the best <laughs> moment of my life. <laughs> I actually, went to, I actually went to I actually went to New York City and put that song on in my earphone just so I could walk down Madison and Fifth Avenue just strutting. I yeah, don't know why. Yeah. Strutting. Well, I was I was I there with a like life. a guy from the from the Bronx. I mean, it was yeah. like so New York. But anyway, um, well, while we're talking about uh, men and attractive or not attractive, yes, please. What? Oh, yes, please. Um, sure. Wh- this guy that Sonia, ca- she oh is my God. so oh horny. Oh my God. She is so oh. horny. Yeah. That bit was awesome from start to finish. Does Dude. anyone else uh, is anyone else with me? This no? schlub that comes over, he look he kind of reminded me of John Candy. <laughs> <laughs> and she was leaning against the wall like, "What's broken?" <laughs> and her <laughs> maniacal <laughs> laugh. Oh he's God. like, "Oh, you would get a dial tone from your ex-husband." She's like, "Ah!" It was crazy. I she loved Sonia. Her. First of all, she one word: inappropriate. Right. But two she's words: annoying. Anno- and inappropriate. Annoying and inappropriate. After that segment. Honestly, I would have thought that Sonia made herself out to be the kind of woman who's like, she'll have sex with the milkman, the postman, the plumber, the electrician. She just seems the dis- uh, desperate and pathetic. Yeah. Th- she, she, threw in, she found a way to throw in like how she's got skinny jeans on. Right. Who While says, she's like bouncing her breasts up and down. Who says, oh, who's, so who mentions the big tits of their assistant <laughs> with the assistant right there. So embarrassing. And the guy's like, yeah, that was this one time. That was... <coughs> so and the poor girl kept going like yeah, this, the like trying to cover And then she does it again. She's like, well, you know, you're going to get that breast, uh, what do you call it, uh, breast, breast reduction. She's like, breast reduction. Breast reduction. Yeah. Sonia. Yeah. Ixnay yeah. on the talking A or whatever that bird language is. And then, <laughs> then, she's, then she shows the guy. She's like, oh, my God. And, of course, devastation. They do a quick shot of the, of the, uh, 
of the ceiling, it's like the paint kind of peeled away a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm thinking there are people who lost homes, entire villages were laid right, waste to right. because of things like Katrina. And she's like, look at this devastation. Have you seen my skinny jeans? Yes. Right, and the right. guy's like, yeah, you guys, we're going to do a pretty kind of a water test. And then you and I should go. God, it was it was silky smooth from start to he finish, that whole interaction. She didn't even seem into it. Yeah, I wrote poor rich. That was my note. Yeah. yeah. Was he? You guys tell me. No, was he, he gorgeous? She was like, he's so hot. I, I, I saw where he was kind of like this manly attractive, where it's like almost like scruffy attractive. Why, for like contractor? An older man. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean. Oh, yeah. Daddy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? I mean, yeah. I, I like guys that kind of look a little bit like scruffy and don't really have it together or something. I don't know. I could see where, like, especially she's lonely. She doesn't have a husband, and you know she's looking. For I don't attention. have a husband. Clearly. I'm not. You know, I'm not attracted to him. I wouldn't be like. You know, he was like kept pulling his pants up over his fat ass, and like she was just like, oh yeah, leaning up against the <laughs> wall and yeah. laughing like a maniac. It was crazy. Somebody emailed me saying that last, uh, maybe it was last season, she found a cell phone in her toilet, m which made her fall in love with her plumber. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, I do. Cheryl I do. emailed me oh, saying, what's awesome. up with Sonia? Why does she have to fall in, with, <laughs> fall in love with every man that's hired to work into her house? <laughs> remember when she found a cell phone in her toilet, which made her fall in love with the plumber? Yeah, yeah. she's desperate. She's so desperate, and she likes the attention. And hmm. the, when she fell off that couch thing, it was like, oh, my uh, God, this yeah. is like awkward eighth grade dance hitting on style. I'm just, I'm just fixing my skinny jeans, she says. Ooh, I'd love to cook for him in my toaster oven. Well, then we also <laughs> saw Sonia. Sonia was just kooky crazy in this episode because we also saw her at the Glad Awards. <laughs> the Glad Awards. And she wasn't there when her name was called. Although, which technically probably speaking, wasn't her shouldn't fault. there have been somebody from the LGBT yeah. to actually work the green room and say, right. excuse me, Miss Sonia, you're on in two. Yeah, or I don't right. know why. You're being called. Instead, she's just sitting there like, yeah, doo, doo, and, doo. and of course they cut that together perfectly where it seemed like crickets were going on or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you know what, like... I'll Going back to what we were talking about earlier about reality TV is scripted, which I, I'm so sorry to disappoint you with that information. <laughs> oh my God. But like, I just felt like that was so incredibly forced and fake. And yeah, yeah, it yeah. was just yeah. like, no one's going to buy that. This actually happened. It just seems so set up to paint the like Sonia's cookie and out of it picture. <laughs> and it's just like, it kind of, to me, it's disappointing as an audience because it's like, you think we're that stupid that we believe that this is right, real, right, you know? Right, right, right. Um, I don't well, know, that people, whole segment annoyed me. Some people may me. be that stupid. I mean, Ramona asked, what the hell is the LGBT? <laughs> and then <laughs> this may be scripted because then Sonia was like, oh, my God, I totally thought it was like bacon, lettuce, tomato or something. I mean, bottom line is, is that who, if offensive. that better be scripted because otherwise it's not only ridiculous, but it's stupid and, yes, offensive. For the record, if I was part of the lesbian gay community, I'd be like, can't the transgender kind of have their own community? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not totally... <laughs> Oh they're God. different. I Phil, mean, where's different. the buzzer? No, that's not a buzzer. <laughs> no, that's a true that's, statement. That's true. That's true. true. That's it's true. like they're a whole different like genre of of stuff. Anyway, I always think that whenever I hear the transgender stuff. Um, <laughs> we saw when Heather arrived because there was Heather, Ramona, Sonia, and Carol were at the Glad Awards, and um, Heather didn't really the way they cut it together anyway, and they didn't make a big deal out of it. But Heather greeted Sonia like hi and ignored Ramona. Yeah. And they didn't touch upon that, but that was just a little observation because Ramona kind of stood there with a drink like, uh -huh, with their googly eyes, kind of just, eh, and then, then they looked like they never said hello. Hmm. Um, but Heather, then they cut to Heather saying, I'm keeping it civil with Ramona or something. But it didn't right. look really civil to me because she ignored her. Right. But, I mean, yeah, it was a little bit of a slow episode, I think. Um, well, we haven't touched on the, Lu Lu yeah. Lu the elephant. Yeah. The elephant in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Luan Morona. Morona. Yeah. Morona. Morona. Yeah. Morona. <laughs> 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 We're friends. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about them on the bench. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That was the most exciting part for right. me. Right. I think I've just been thinking about it so much that I assume we talked about we, it already. We have referred to it, but we yeah, didn't yeah. actually discuss, discuss it. it. So Maybe yeah. we should do that now. It, it was what do you think? Yeah. yeah. It was a little hard to follow that conversation. I felt like they just basically talked over each other the whole time. Was Did anybody else get that? They told. They that's what I wrote down at the same time at I, each th other. That's what I wrote down exactly, uh, just talking over each other. It was just funny. I thought their body language was very interesting. Again, made me wonder, you know, how staged and scripted that conversation was, um, because I don't know about you guys, but like, say you and I have been in a huge argument, 
and I have very ill feelings towards you, I'm not going to sit like right up on you on the bench. Like right. Luann had right. her arm practically around it's Ramona. It's passive yeah. aggressive body and language. I was like, well, yeah. you know, if I'm mad at someone, I'm going to be like this. Like... Yeah. Well, would you even Close bother with like the kissies and the huggies no, first? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I'd right? be like, no. hey, we need to talk. You'd be like, and then I'd have sit a like seat. five feet away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'd probably want to do it across the table and not like ne sitting next to them on Not the like bench. in a park on a yeah. Sunday, like, oh, look at the birds. And, and the first thing she talks about, Ramona, she doesn't, she's like, oh my God, I totally got a whiff of the. Because her thing with, instead of I had a leg accident and now I've got a thing, but she's like, kids, 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 kids. First thing out of her mouth anywhere is like, I totally thought of my kids when I saw this. That's the first thing she leads with instead of, hello. Disagree. Yeah. Hey. Pinot Grigio, 99.9% .9 of the time is what Pino she Grigio. leads with. Yeah. Really? Really. Interesting. Yeah. That's true. She does walk into that lunch and go, Joe, I need a glass of Pinot Grigio right now. now. All the time. Well, she, I think their behavior, I think it's um, interesting, like psychologically wise, when they sit like that, it's, I think, almost like animalistic. It's like almost they're sizing each other up in a sense. It's so fake, but it's like almost like... I'm gonna get this close to you because I'm gonna show you that I own you, mm -hmm. and then they, and then the other person gets even closer because like, oh, you want to get this close to me? I'm gonna get this close <laughs> to you, and we're it's just this weird mm -hmm. animalistic yeah. type of um, set it, sizing each other up. Maybe you're right. Um, and I just experienced that from high school all the time. The girls that would pick on me, it'd be like they they would get so close to me and be so sweet to me, but it was because they wanted to have power over me, mm -hmm. and so it was like you almost got as close to them just to let them know that hey, you don't have the power, and let's pretend we're really liking each other right now, even though we want to and punch each other in the faces. Right. So it's a real, like, dynamic that could be studied body language-wise, I think. Um, That's and I a great observation, because Luann, yeah. I think, is definitely taller than, if not all she's of them. She's a lot Most taller. of yeah. them. And in almost every altercation that I can think of, she's pretty up close and personal, and she's usually, like, body forward. Mm -hmm. And she's, especially with Ramona, she towers. Ramona's like... Yeah, well, she's like the little dog that's barking. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> you know, that sort yes. of thing. So I definitely think that's a good yeah. Ramona face. You can hear <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, nailed it. Yeah. Thank you. She did take it down a little bit in the purple eye shadow Her today. Her eyes, it's just the eyes bugging out the... <laughs> <laughs> like, she looks like a freaked out cat or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She Crazy. was doing like a lot of avoidance too. Because when she first met with Luann, she's like, oh, this just reminds me of Avery. And, and then um, she was talking about her manicure, yeah. you know. I got shellac, you know, in yeah. this last three weeks. That's a gel manicure, by the way, if anybody's yeah, interested. Yeah, I hate that word shellac. Yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then it went from, like, that small talk to la, 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 yeah. like, at the same time. I mean, their argument, the way, th the way they were speaking, it was like they're not going to get anywhere with each right. other because they both want to dominate the conversation. They w both want to be right, and there's going to be no moving forward in that kind of, in that kind of language. Uh, but I, d I will say that I like to speak my mind. I like Ramona. I do think Ramona, Ramona doesn't have to apologize, but I can see where Luann's coming from, where it's like, hey, you, you, you told me I was a bad mother, and I just really don't appreciate that. And Ramona's justifying it by saying, well, you are a bad mother. But I can see why Luann would be annoyed, and as much as I think Luann is condescending, I thought that Ramona really didn't give her an opportunity to kind of explain why she was upset. And, and Ramona was like, you only hear one side of the conversation, but I thought Ramona also was only hearing one side of the conversation. I agree. I totally. agree with that. Um, Luann was also upset saying that Ramona threatened her. Um, Which is so ridiculous. Well, but I mean, one, when she confronts him and says, you threaten me, this again could be editing, but they froze on Ramona's face. They just froze on it. She's like... Now, that could be one, two things. That's either editing to try to make it into something it actually wasn't, or it's Ramona getting caught because then it turned into everything except admitting or dealing with whether or not a threat was actually made. She did everything in her power to make it seem like she tried to play it off like it wasn't a threat, like it never happened. And then it was, well, I was talking about something else. It was misdirection. So I feel like at some level, nobody wants to admit that things did happen and they're talking about owning up to stuff, but neither of them is actually owning up to stuff. Right. Mm hmm which makes mm -hmm. no sense. Like well, Luann, later in the episode, we see with her son, who's failing French. Mm -hmm. Out of all the subjects, <laughs> he has to be failing French. That's awesome. I thought Jock, her boyfriend, actually had a couple funny lines. He said, <laughs> um, and I was the one who was doing his homework, yeah. which I thought was funny because yeah. he's French. And then he also, uh, he, the son had said, or, or Jock said, French isn't really useful. It's useless. It's a useless Unless language, you're yeah. with the girls right. or something. So I thought he, uh, his sense of humor was surprising to me yeah. based on the fact that he would be dating Luann. Like, it's just surprising. Well, and to Ramona's point, when Luann was doing her confes confessional, she said, at the end of the day, I'm like, can't you just get your homework done and take this off my plate? Like, right. you know, you're, and also, P.S., 
your kids start failing, it at means school, something's going on. With something's you. going on. Right. Something that is a classic sign that something's yes. going on with your kids. Yes. So how so about addressing it instead of just yelling at it's him? It's like your kids are proving Ramona's point. Right. Right. Yeah. His explanation. The kid's explanation was what? That he gets sidetracked. Right. Like he, he does it and then he like forgets to turn in the homework. He gets sidetracked somehow. Like what is it that's going on in your life that's getting sidetracked? However, in 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 Luann's defense, that boyfriend Jacques, like you either you either keep quiet, or you mount a unified front to get. Bottom line is the kid needs to be educated. So what you don't want to be doing is it's she's obviously already having problems raising this child. You don't want to be like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. Forget about French. This useless language. You know what I mean? Like you should be well, like, you should be studying. <laughs> she's right. She's your mother. Listen to her. Instead, he's like, you we are ridiculous. We have in studio right all now. That's really good. I'm, thank you. All I'm saying is he's ridiculous for refuting. Like you're not helping anything. Either make make the kid understand education important or just shut the hell up. Well, I will totally be that parent that's like Jack. That's just kind of like effing around. Yeah. My, my biggest issue with the son was um, not that he didn't speak French fluently, but but that he can barely speak English. Um, anybody <laughs> else notice his mouth? Thing? I'm like, his mouth doesn't move when he talks. I couldn't understand it. I would be like, you need English class. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, the problem. Like, right. Oh, well, that's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal observation. It's horrible. You know who right. he reminded me? He reminded me of the actor who plays Deborah Messing's son <gasps> in Smash. And Smash. Yes. Uh, he doesn't move his mouth yeah. when he talks either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Awkward teens, awkward teens. I can't do my impressions of mumbling as well as you can do your French impressions, but, you know, I tried. No, you did great. <laughs> Not yeah. an actor. Fantastic. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Thanks. Well, cool. I think <laughs> we pretty much went over pretty much every scene. So. If you guys are Ooh, ready to go to a commercial, we'll come back and quickly do our special segment and some news and gossip. Sounds great. Hey there, good buddies. The handle's Wooly Bear. I'm a truck driving man, but I'm not that old school kind of truck driving man. No, I like to listen to podcasts while I'm driving through these great United States of ours. And my favorite podcasts in the world are from After Buzz TV. And why? Because <laughs> After Buzz TV is like a post-game wrap-up show for all your favorite TV shows. Like Jersey Shore, Dancing with the Stars, Mad Men, and a whole truckload more. I like listening to my Gossip Girl podcast, catching up with all my fellow fans and getting all the latest news and gossip. You know, I got some strong opinions. And After Buzz TV lets me share those opinions with thousands of other listeners. Holy, what a feeling. I used to doze off on those lonely stretches of road. And don't worry, I got the cruise control. But now I'm wide awake and listening to all the After Buzz TV goodness. <laughs> Check them out. Give them a holler. And tell them the old woolly bear sent you. That was our in-studio audience just giving us a nice round of applause. <laughs> Welcome you, back. Well, Thanks, guys. Welcome back to After Buzz TV. Um, we are talking about uh, Real Housewives of New York Season 2, or Season 5, Episode 2. <laughs> and um, we're going to do our special segment for you guys right now, which I love. I think is really creative, and I love to give the honor to Anna for coming up with it. Mm -hmm. It's Thanks. called Thanks. What She Should Have Said. Um, and this is uh, in honor of Luann, because Luann is supposed to be a countess with a lot of etiquette and instead she seems to be kind of a little trashy without some tact so we've taken it upon ourselves to replace her words with ours and other women on the show as well right um i really liked the um <laughs> to start with luann's quote to ramona um yes what other tricks do you have to pull out of your ass or have I think it was what hat. other dirty trick. I think it was what other dirty tricks do you have uh, to pull out of your pinot filled hat? Pino. Oh my god! I just spit, and I forgot to say pinot. That's the most <laughs> important part. Yeah. Duh. Which is like the coolest thing I've ever heard. Right. Yeah. yeah I loved that. However, it was actually a great line. <laughs> yeah. It was a great yeah. line. However. Right. right. <laughs> However, she <laughs> could have, should have said, you know. Anything, anything else. Anything else. <laughs> I didn't come anything. up with the part. I'm I still I was still part. confused on how they just decided to say like, okay, after all that when nothing got resolved and they're like, okay, friends. Because all these cool. women are just out of their minds. But That's yeah, funny. so in, in this in that in that regard, she could have just said been like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I mean I really didn't she could have just said, you know, please keep um the I'll keep the drunks away. Keep the drunks away. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um she also said and again, I don't have really a rebuttal for any of these <laughs> statements, but which is not the point of the segment, actually. <laughs> you um, should have changed the segment. <laughs> did yeah. you hear? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, she, she didn't said? say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 More she shouldn't have said this, Oh, no, period. she didn't say that. I wish yeah. she would. Hell to the law! <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that. I like that. That's good. 
<laughs> we'll call it the that hell was, to the no. That was oh, hell to the no. Yaramon's just really good with the impressions. Yeah. <laughs> that was him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally him. I'm a chameleon. Um, so Ramona also said, I al- only always wish you the best. And to that, Luann responded, okay. <laughs> <laughs> In the huskiest yeah. voice of all time. <laughs> she okay. could have said, okay. I wish you the best as well. Right. Or thank you. Right. Right. Anything. But okay. Okay. Um, and then another thing she said, which wasn't super rude, it just was kind of delusional. She said to Ramona regarding her kids having that party, she said, Why do you have spies in the Hamptons? <laughs> spies? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> now you're in the kooky shop and it doesn't make any sense. And then the last thing um, that I thought was really funny that they could have said was, Oh my God. Oh God. Someone else go. I don't know. I can't find it. Anyone have anything? Were you going to bring up Heather? Uh, no, I was going to let somebody else do that. But I was going to throw up. Well, first of all, there's that one bit that Aviva goes, well, isn't she a singer? Ramona says, what singing career? Right. right if right. you really want to let bygones like be bygones, you should have just said, it should have been like, I plead the fifth or something. Instead of saying, what singing career? You mean that YouTube song? <laughs> that probably wasn't <laughs> the most appropriate thing to say. But that's in Ramona's personality. I'm cool with Ramona saying that. Because it's number one True. what singing career, seriously. Yeah. Well, then, then it's definitely inappropriate <laughs> if you're at an LGBT fun- if you're at a glad function representing the LGBT and you're a presenter there and you uh, liken the LGBT acronym to bacon, lettuce, and tomato. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say that might <laughs> yeah. be slightly Sounds inappropriate. Delicious. Inappropriate, <laughs> Sonia. Yummo. I'd be complimented. I'd be like, oh yeah, I smell like bacon. You better. You better believe it, yeah. Maybe that presenter that was there presenting Sonia might have appreciated that. He was beautiful, and his makeup was was impeccable. I was noticing the (sighs) makeup was beautiful. Yeah. That's like, okay. Teach a class here or two, buddy. (laughs) Of makeup. Right. Applying. Right, right, right. And um, I I had, I guess. Do you have one? I guess two. Um, When, uh, for, wait, what was it? What was the thing? Oh, hail to the no. Yeah, <laughs> oh, hail to the no. Was when Heather... Oh, <laughs> hail to the no! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> when Heather said <laughs> that she was raised pro- Protestant, but now she's oh, yeah, Jewish yeah. by yeah. injection. Yeah. I've literally been, like, visualizing her... And her husband... Being yeah. shot up with matzah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so... <laughs> what? <laughs> Sex. Kristen. Oh. Duh. Oh, by oh, injection. So I had to actually yeah. like show. Well, still, it's being like shot it's up with gross. matzo. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. I'm kidding. I had no just, idea that that. That's yeah, that's what she that. meant. Yeah. And it's disturbing because it's mm-hmm. like, ew, yeah. who wants a picture of Heather doing that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard I, that line and I thought immediately, Anna, unleash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I have nothing to unleash. It's just like wholly inappropriate. And <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I, she's just like so proud of it, and you know, you know, she wants to be Jewish. She wants to be Jewish. Like well, no, cool she said, Jewish. "I haven't converted fully yet." Right, yeah. right. I hate but until I hate that, that time. Though. Yeah, like, I don't know. Whatever. I hate. And also, like, listen, I only date Jews, but like, Judic is not something to like <laughs> brag about. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard many people brag about it. Just Heather. Is that what you said or she said? I'm saying. Oh, okay. I was like, did she say that? <laughs> That would have been amazing. That would definitely have I been like, a. I totally missed what sh- that. Oh hell to the no! She should not have said that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I guess my last what she should have said was when Carol and Aviva were in the clothing shop, and Carol was going on and on about her open relationship with Russ. Um, Aviva just kept going, "That is so cool." <laughs> and what she should have said is. He's just not that into you. <laughs> like, yeah. so as true. in, like, a 2006 reference. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I just don't think he is. Yeah. Sorry, hon. Yeah. I think we'll yeah. find that out later, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. His demeanor with her was not as lovey-dovey as hers with, was with him. She was like, oh. Well, I do have some news and gossip if yeah. you want to get into Please. that. After Buzz TV News. This just in. This just in. So, speaking of um, he's just not that into you, it, it's really funny They did an interview with Russ, and it turns out those songs are not about Carol. <gasps> um, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, uh, um, oh, hell to the Oh, no. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that the song is, uh, I am miss being lonely when I'm with you. It's actually about New York. Um, and <laughs> wow, he says that you know he thinks of that Carol when he thinks of New York, but it's, a, it's actually just about New York. That is um, awesome. <laughs> I dig. And then the first song that we heard um, is "Crazy" too, and that song's actually about a guy who had a really serious drug problem, 
a drug and alcohol, and um, it's about <laughs> watching his life go down in flames. So, <laughs> so it's like In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. And <laughs> it's like that, but it's definitely but not, not close, about yeah. Carol. Um, wow. He is. <laughs> That's a low blow, really. <laughs> um, he will be uh, performing uh, in the NASA Coliseum on July 1st, and. They, they expect that Carol will not be there. Uh, he didn't want to comment on the status of their relationship, but it's rumored that they're not seeing each other uh, anymore. Yeah. What's yeah. The, where's the Nassau Coliseum? Uh, Long Island, I believe. So he's big. He's huge. He's with Aerosmith. No, he tours with Aerosmith. He doesn't mean it's that he's part of the he's band. Met. He's yeah. part of the road or like he's, yeah, he's part, part of the like extended, the extended, extended band. band. He could be like a right. session musician probably. Well, yeah. Right. He's a big deal. And also, this is interesting. Um, <laughs> no. Bethany Frankel actually uh, helped cast oh, Aviva. That was my news. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Um, <laughs> Do it up, sister. You guys want to fight it out real quick? No, <laughs> I, I would Why? rather not. Yeah. Rochambeau <laughs> for it. Listen, I announced it. Why don't you talk about it? No, no, no. I'll add in details. Please uh, go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, no, I, that's really all I have to say. I was kind of surprised because I thought Bethany was just off doing her own thing, and I'm surprised that she has her her hand in this pie. Yeah. Her finger. Well, Whatever I the yeah. term is. What I thought was interesting was that Bethany Frankel said that um, she had recommended her a long time ago, and nothing went through with it, and they were looking to cast this, and Bethany sent said to Andy Cohen, why don't you take a look at Aviva, my friend Aviva, or this woman Aviva. She didn't really know her that well, but she said she just seemed like she'd be a good character. She seemed like she'd be part of some drama on the show. Right. Interesting. So, so I maybe think that's she will telling. Be. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely... That's yeah. definitely that production. She's starting yeah. on slow. Yeah. 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 And I did see, I mean, I saw the three ladies on the Today Show, and Aviva did say, like, you know, I went to some places that I didn't think I would be able to go to in terms of being dramatic and catty. So, you know, we right. definitely know right. we have that to look forward yeah. to. So on that note, we'll just transition into <laughs> predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. So we saw Carol um, in that scene, as Anna mentioned, uh, flirting with Ramona's husband. Oh, um, hell to the law! Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's Ramona next week. So I think we're going to see drama with Ramona and Carol, which is not ex was not expected to me, you know, until that last second, right. second where we right. saw that. Because, of course, you know, like I've been saying, I think Carol's chill, but, you know, it could all be a facade. And that's going to be exciting. It will be. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. I also think that, because um, we saw Ramona... Um, um, not um, not invited to London with Heather, so there's going to be some drama there. I mean, the whole I think the whole season is just going to really be everyone hating on Ramona to for some reason or or something happening with Ramona, um, because Aviva says, "Wait, you're not invited to London with Heather," and Ramona's like, mm -mm, "I don't know." No. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and then I think Luann and Ramona are obviously going to continue on their on their journey of love yeah yeah um prediction uh you know i would love to see as much as it would be a prediction i would love to see either luann or sonia hit on or be inappropriate with reed so that that way the content the, it, it, the, the theme of <laughs> poor aviva is not oh going to be able to go out with someone who hasn't <laughs> slept with everybody else on the class continues <laughs> i would just love to see reed who apparently loves the motorcycle and dirt bike just being that, I said, and it very well could happen. Maybe Carol will start because she loves to flirt with other people's husbands while they're in the room. I'm, I would love to see some people try to jump on Aviva's bandwagon and make Aviva feel yet again threatened. That's some imagination you've got. <laughs> I, I love know. all these new. I worked on it every day. Um, Thanks, Bill. I think that we're going to see, I predict, we're going to see Carol. Um, be really inappropriate with men and maybe even hear that she has slept with somebody's husband uh, or significant at other point, right? at some point. Um, and I also predict that Ramona is going to reach out to Jill Zarin. Wow. Wow. Interesting. interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Have you seen any like mention of Jill talking about that on Twitter or nope. anything? Very interesting. Nope. Well, I'm going to hold you to it. Intuitive. A it's just intuitive. I'm holding yeah. you to it. Before I spoke to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Molly, anything? My predictions? Yeah. I, I don't really have any strong predictions right now. Yeah. I just have hopes, and I, I hope that um, I hope that Carol gets – I ac honestly do hope that she gets involved with somebody's husband because <laughs> I think that will gr create great drama, and right now she's kind of drama-free. Yeah. And um, I think that would be fun. But we all know drama-free is not good. It's not good TV. It's not That's good. true. It's not good to be. Yeah. 
Well, thanks for listening. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and give out your Twitter um, and things like that so people can follow us. Oh, sure. Hi, everybody. You can follow me at, at Yerman Gur, Y-E-R-M-A-N-G-U-R. I'm Anna Koppel. You can find me here on Sundays at 6 o'clock on After Buzz, uh, 6 Pacific Standard Time, doing Chicago Mob Lives. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Koppel for Mayor, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. And I'm Molly Harper. You can find me at mollyharpercomedy.com and on Twitter at mollycomedy. And I am Kristen Carney. I want to say thanks again to everyone on iTunes listening and YouTube as well. Um, if you guys want to rate and comment, that would be extra special. Um, you can find me on Twitter, um, only on Twitter because I just I live inside of it. It's a <laughs> very cold existence. But um, uh, twitter.com <laughs> slash It's going to be okay. Awkward saying that. Kristen Carney, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-A-R-N-E-Y. And um, go to my blog, Sweat the Small Stuff with Kristen.com. And until next week, we will uh, be seeing you then. Absolutely. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.